Sabrina. And I'm Naomi. And welcome, welcome to, to The, the transcript. transcript. This week, The Transcript investigates recent revelations of photography in a Northampton High School bathroom, talks to members of the boys lacrosse team, and explores whether or not cybersecurity issues will change the way we use Facebook. On Wednesday, President Trump signed a memo directing federal agencies to deploy the National Guard to the U.S. border with Mexico. This comes after President Trump stated earlier this week that military action should be used to secure the border until a wall is complete. The Department of Homeland Security and Department of Defense were instructed to send an undisclosed number of troops to the region. The Trump administration announced Tuesday that it would place 25% tariffs on goods from China unless China promptly made trade concessions. Trade tensions escalated Wednesday when China announced plans to impose tariffs on 106 U.S. products. The list of products includes soybeans, cars, and whiskey, and the tariffs could have a significant effect on American soybean farmers. A start date for the tariffs has not been announced. On Monday, every school in Kentucky and many in Oklahoma closed as teachers traveled to their state capitals to demand increased school funding and wages. The strikes follow a nine-day teacher strike in West Virginia in late February, which ended with a 5% pay raise to public school teachers. Last week, Oklahoma Governor Mary Fallon approved a 15-18% to 18 teacher pay increase, the first time teacher salaries have been raised in the state in a decade. However, the teachers say it is not enough and teachers in both states continue to protest for increased school funding. On Monday, NHS janitor Michael Kromensky pled not guilty to four charges of photographing an unsuspected new person. Allegedly, through structural modifications in the first floor in Northampton High girls' bathroom. I'm Flor Castillo, and this is Tell It Like It Is. On Thursday, March 29th, students found out through an assembly that unusual structural modifications had been discovered in the first floor girls' bathroom. Shortly after, through a letter sent home, students learned that a Northampton High janitor was placed on pay leave. To find out how the administration discovered and mobilized in regard to this issue, I spoke to NHS principal Brian Lombardi. A custodian and maintenance person were um, rep responding to a re um, report for a leak in one of the internal walls um, in the custodian's um, closet. And when they're there, they noticed that some of the pipes were bent. They were concerned, why was this bent? It shouldn't be bent here um, in this space. And they investigated, um, and their investigation led them to find that there were um, some holes um, in the drop ceiling tiles in the girls' bathroom. So they were immediately reported it. Um, we immediately shut down um, the bathroom, locked it, I called the superintendent. Um, we then contacted the police to, to launch an investigation. We had our class meetings, as, you, as you're aware of, uh, informing the student body that um, the holes were identified, um, that also a person had been um, put on administrative leave. Friday at 11 o'clock that night, I received a phone call from Officer Wallace that an arrest had been made of the former custodian and of the four counts um, that he was being charged with. So we made a plan to make sure that our counselors were available. We held a faculty meeting that morning, seeing how teachers and staff were doing, um, and letting them know that we were going to be available all day for anything if a student or them needed someone to check in with and answer any questions. And then we had our morning class uh, meetings, and that was aimed really to, uh, one, give students um, an update on the information, but also just allow a forum for students to ask whatever questions came to mind and try to best to answer them with the information that we had um, moving forward. For many female high school students, questions have risen about how the people in these photos will be identified and notified. If and when that happens, um, the, the police will contact us. Um, there will be no males doing that. We would probably try to limit it to as few people as possible. So it, it, it would um, potentially be you know, a, a female administrator and maybe one of our counselors. If an individual um, was identified, then it would be a thoughtful process of how do you contact the family of, of that person. There would never be a situation that we would call that student down in school and, and, and you know, throw that on them. In response to this incident, many in the NHS community are wondering how something like this could have occurred and what can be done to prevent incidents like this in the future. 
Above all, these revelations have had a significant effect on students, especially female students who use the bathroom regularly. When I found out what happened, I was ultimately shocked and kind of like scared since I've used the bathroom and many females use the bathroom. So me, along with other females in the school, we felt mostly unsafe and kind of violated. Well, I thought it was very shocking at first because like I've never heard anything like that. But then I was kind of disgusted. Well, yeah, the whole situation was pretty scary, but I don't know what else can be done to make our bathrooms more safe. The fact that like a former student from the high school was like watching me is pretty disturbing and I feel really grossed out and the fact that we don't even know who he has pictures of yet and this like anticipation of it could be anyone, it could be you, it could be me, it could be any of your friends is like really disturbing. I think we just need to watch what our adults are doing more carefully. I think um, since they have authority we just kind of let them do what they want yet we don't watch, we watch our students so carefully, but we don't watch our adults as, as, as carefully as we should. Some in the community were surprised by the seemingly low bill of $500, which was paid by the janitor who now awaits his pre-trial hearing on May 7. We'll continue to update you as more information is released. I'm Zor Castillo, and this was Tell It Like It Is. Hi, I'm Jonah, and I still hamped up from Lulu. Yeah, funny. Hi, I'm Lulu. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? This time of year brings out many things, like flowers and short sleeves. But for members of the boys lacrosse team, spring brings lots of boat shoes, flows, pulse go celebrations, and tall Nike sock tan lines. The boys lacrosse team is looking forward to what looks like another successful season and is hoping to prove themselves as a team to beat in their league. The sport itself is filled with many different positions, which all require different equipment and skill. I sat down with seniors Henry Atias and Henry Higgins to learn about the team's chemistry and goals for the season, their goals offensively, and the changes that were made for the upcoming season. The group of seniors right now has been playing together since sixth grade. So, I mean, just having that under our belts is just huge for us. Um, and really knowing how to play off each other and what our preferences are. Because our defense is so inexperienced, it's, I think our job as the offense is to kind of take the air out of the ball and just mm -hmm. spend more time in the offense so the defense can have a little break and figure out whatever they need to figure out. During the off season, we had a few injuries and we lost a lot of seniors last year. So we've had to have um, younger kids like Ben Howe step up and play defense and uh, show them the ropes within like the first two weeks. And um, we've had to kind of integrate a system of defense that was like very simple and just relied on very easy practices of defense and then just rely on the athleticism of everybody to make it work. Um, and so far we've been pretty successful with it, but it's going to take some um, changes. I also talked with senior goalie Ryan Hang to learn about the physical and mental aspects of being a goalie and why he chose the position in the first place. So how I got into playing goalie was I originally started playing as an attackman, so an offensive player and I was really really bad so they put me at goalie and then after a couple practices I picked it up and I kind of just like fell in love with the position. I would say it's more of a mental game just because getting scored on can make you feel bad about yourself so you have to reset yourself for the next play and just try to make the save the next time. You don't run around as much, so physically you're getting hit by the ball. The best piece of advice I've received is stepping towards the ball. I applied that this year a lot more than my previous years, and I found that to be really effective. The boys lacrosse team is looking to get the first one of the season tonight at Chickabee High at 5 p.m. The softball team has a home game today at 4.45. The baseball team has a game today at 4 p.m. against Amherst. The girls tennis team faces off against Longmeadow at 4 p.m. And Boys Ultimate has a game against rival Amherst at 5.45. Thanks for watching Hemped Up. I'm Lulu Kesson. Howdy, I'm Mikey Diaz. Today, April 6, marks the 94th anniversary of the first round the world flight. The journey took 175 days. Nice. In other news, Hundreds of millions of people are active on Facebook. 
even after information concerning people's privacy was released following the infamous Cambridge Analytica investigation. However, many social media users may not know exactly which information can be assessed by third parties and how that information can be used. I sat down with James Bates, network analyst for the city of Northampton, to learn more. Internet security would be kind of whatever comes based in the cloud or even uh, your home computer applications and things like that. So it's a, it's a, it's a wide-ranging all-encompassing term when you say cybersecurity. With Cambridge Analytica, I believe, <clears throat> they set up a contract to have Cam Cambridge Analytica uh, take data and then uh, massage it in a certain way and gain information off of that data. Uh, come to find out, they uh, sold that to another company to make money. Facebook says they don't know anything about it, but in a sense, uh, they, whenever anything happens like that, you should be notified as a user. For instance, if a credit card gets hacked and they steal uh, users' information, they need to notify the user that their data has been stolen. But it is not safe when it's in the cloud uh, being used by another company. You should not feel that it's safe from being protected. You should do things or, uh, or ask the company what are they doing with the data and how are they protecting it and always be aware that it could be, at some point in time, could be uh, used in illegal or be copied or used in illegal ways. That, uh, so it, it is not safe. Many Americans claim that they are not comfortable with their personal information being so easily accessible by third-party companies, but continue to use these social media platforms regardless. I took to the halls of NHS to poll students to see if they still use their social media platforms. Facebook, YouTube, oh, Instagram. yeah, definitely, yeah. Yes, but that's because of student government, solely. No. Um, yeah, I use Instagram a bit. Um, I don't really use Facebook that much. I have an account, but I never use it. But I try not to put much personal information on there because I don't feel comfortable with companies like that having information about me. I'm Mikey Diaz, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next week on The Transcript. Honors Art 4 is putting up murals around the school. So make sure to keep an eye out for those. Thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. I certainly wouldn't be the same person if he weren't born, because, uh, you know, I'd actually be happy. Mm -hmm.